Good morning, Raphael. Would you please test your audio and your visual, please? Raphael, if you would try that Hi. again. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that I have started the recording and we are streaming live at this point. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Thank you. And if you could just test your camera, that would be great. Thank you, good, good to see you. <laughs> Little tired, got out of class late last night. <laughs> As was it a good class? Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, be back in a few minutes. All right, sounds good. I'll see you in a little bit.
Good morning, Council Member Tibbetts. If you would go ahead and test your audio and visual, that would be wonderful. Yep. Hey, good morning. Good morning. And just so that you know, we are um, recording at this point and streaming live. Okay, we'll try not to be like uh, that school board <laughs> on East Bay. That would be just my luck. No. And congratulations on the new, the newest member of the family. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Rafael. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. Good. Warming up already. I know my wife and I were walking yesterday and she said, you know, this place doesn't really have seasons. It kind of goes winter to summer to hellfire to winter. <laughs> Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, John. Are we expecting Victoria today? We are. 
Um, so if we wanted to skip her a few more minutes. Sounds good. Thank you. Give me 30 seconds. Sure. Good morning, Councilmember uh, Fleming. If you would go ahead and test your audio for us. Hola, buenos dias. Thank you. Oh, buenos dias. All right, well, let's call this meeting to order. Um, I'm going to do the reading of the Brown Act provisions here, so bear with me. Due to the provisions of the governor's executive orders, which suspend certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of the health officer of the county of Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID 19. The downtown subcommittee will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Committee, committee members and staff are participating from remote locations and practicing social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item three public comment or during public hearing items will be able to do so by utilizing the raise hand feature uh, or pressing star nine on their phone. They'll then be given the ability to address the committee. Uh, Chair, will you take the roll? Um, I will go ahead and do that. Um, let the record reflect that all members are present. Okay, terrific. Um, let's move on to item two, public comments. Um, so this is the time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda but which are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when the item is called. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Do we have anybody wishing to speak? I apologize, I forgot to unmute. We have no raised hands at this time. Okay, thanks. We'll go to item three, new business. Um, we have the Railroad Square Association Community Benefit District update. Uh, Rafael, you wanna give us some updates on that one? Yes, and actually I just- Oh, and Chris Wilson, I'm sorry. Yeah, I have a brief update and then I'll um, turn it over to Chris Wilson, the executive director of the Railroad Square Association. Uh, and my brief update is related to a wayfinding project that I've been working with uh, along with the uh, wayfinding committee, which is represented by a couple of board members, as well as a, uh, a store owner. Um, so we have held a, a couple of meetings with city staff, including members from the uh, PPW, as well as uh, the planning division. And so far, things are, um, are looking pretty good. 
there is some more um, uh, research that needs to be completed related to the fact that the city's uh, design guidelines talks about wayfinding signs in the urban design chapter and the downtown plan also talks about way, wayfinding signs. So we need to determine exactly if um, planning review is required or if, if planning needs to get further involved. Uh, so we're looking into that. In the meantime, uh, again, the, the meetings have been very positive and the uh, community members have gotten some uh, uh, good feedback. So the uh, idea is to, uh, the proposed project would involve up to 12 signs in the Rovo Square area, but we also uh, want to hold uh, discussions with the DAO as well as the uh, Sonoma County Museum because they also have um, uh, talked about uh, wayfinding along uh, the uh, downtown corridor and uh, as well. So we definitely want, uh, you know, some similar aesthetics, uh, design, so uh, more to come a later, a, at a later time. So I'll definitely report uh, on, on uh, upcoming updates. And now I'll turn it over to uh, Chris uh, that has more. Good morning. Thank you, Raphael. And yep. congratulations, Council Member Tibbetts on the baby. Very exciting. Thank you. <laughs> so um, Unfortunately, our biggest issue right now is the transients and the vandalism that's occurring in Railroad Square. I uh, want to acknowledge the time and the support from the, both the city and, the, and Jonathan Wolf from our police department, who've been responsive to many of our calls. We're experiencing um, vandalism, broken windows, and sometimes there's even been multiple incidences for the, at the same business. So we've increased nighttime security starting tonight. A dedicated car will be patrolling Railroad Square five nights a week. And then on two nights will be random um, uh, drive-throughs. And the homeless encampments are increasing again under 5th and, and 6th Street overpasses, which I'm sure you are aware of. Um, it's impacting our hotels and especially the AC hotel. Um, their guests have to walk from their parking lot that they have on the north end right past the area of the encampments to get to the hotel. So the hotel has been experiencing loss of business, guests leaving and uh, checking out of the hotels to go elsewhere. So it's, it's a big problem. Uh, we are committed to help address the homeless issue and trying to, with the goal of creating some collaborate efforts between the, the city and police chamber and other others to kind of try to focus on solutions and action steps because we see this is really impacting the community and the and the ec the economy of our community um, our economic future with the nice weather we can only expect it to get worse so we're really trying to stay on top of it and address the problems before the encampments get so large that it's even harder to take care of but um, on a more positive note, it has been really great to see the improvement along the Prince Greenway uh, with the cleanup efforts have been made down there, significant um, additional lighting's in the works and that's gonna, that will also help a lot. Really wanna thank Jason Nutt for meeting with us and helping to facilitate the cleaning of that area. Most of our recent efforts because of this has been really stepping up the security and street maintenance in Railroad Square. So we've hired a street maintenance company that comes one time a week and just focuses on cleaning, weeding, light trimming, overall street maintenance to help keep the district looking more welcoming down there for, <clears throat> excuse me, our shoppers and our, and our patrons. Raphael already mentioned the wayfinding project and thank you Raphael for your work on that. Um, that's, uh, so you already talked about that. Our tree project is moving slowly as we're waiting for additional bids uh, for tree trimming, removal and replacement, focusing first on 5th Street and 4th Street. I really wanna thank Cadence for meeting with us to share your progress downtown and how we might benefit, benefit from working with the same company. Um, because the railroad square has older sidewalks and some concrete issues down there, we're waiting for um, another bid that will include the scope of that, and that could be that could be significant. But uh, we are trying to move that project forward. 
And they were working with the merchants who were creating some co-op radio ads uh, that'll run from April through October to promote business in Railroad Square and our merchants. Um, thanks, Cadence, again, for including us in the excellent adventures. Uh, we've had a lot of families down. The stores said there's been a lot of traffic down. It's been fun to go down and watch kids running around looking for their clues. Um, so it, I think the merchants have felt that it's it's really helped the visit, increase the visibility in our district. So in general, our restaurants and our shoppers uh, or our shops are experiencing more traffic. Diners, people seem to be wanting to get out uh, as, as we can within our limits. And I'm, I'm happy to say that there, there is a feeling of optimism. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Chris. Um, any questions from council? I'm not seeing any questions. Um, we'll turn to the public for any public comment on item 3.1. There are no raised hands at this time. Uh, Ch Chair Tibbetts, uh, if I may real fast, uh, there's also a of meeting uh, uh, set up uh, this afternoon with the uh, Sonoma County Farmers Market. Mm. And Chris will be participating in that. There's a proposed project to the, for the possibility of holding a, a weekly farmer's market. So we're going to talk to Kelly from that sector and see how she, what kind of guidance she can provide. But that's also in the works. And um, I think I forgot to say good morning to all of you. So good morning, uh, Chair Tibbetts and Council Members Fleming and Sawyer and everybody else on the call. Thank well, you, Rafael, for bringing that, remembering the farmer's market. Yes, <laughs> we're working on that. That's it. Yeah, thanks, Rafael. All right, well, um, let's move on to item 3.2. Thank you again, Chris um, and Raphael. Uh, so I think we have Candace uh, coming up. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> um, congratulations, Chair Tibbetts. Hopefully you uh, have nobody can hear the background noise in my house, but I have a feeling you might be able to. Familiar sounds to you now. Um, I wanna just start by saying thanks to everyone echoing previous comments. Uh, once again, all the city staff have been really grateful I mean, I'm really very grateful for all the work the city staff are putting in and they've been working very hard to support our efforts. A um, couple quick updates just for uh, general things happening downtown. I don't think that we've had any new businesses open since we last met, but we are anticipating at least one this coming month uh, with Fleet Feet moving from Railroad Square to Third Street next to Willoughby's. Um, and then in the next couple of months, we have uh, two new restaurants opening on the 500 block in the old Stout Brothers and um, Tex Wasabi locations. Um, and I, those are anticipated opening in, in, in one to two months. So hopefully this summer they'll be there. And then we also have three of, the, of Santa Rosa Plaza's B Street storefronts being occupied soon, which is really exciting. So uh, Grill Santa Rosa is opening this month, uh, new Mediterranean and um, American spot. I think you've all probably seen the sign because the signs are up already, but they open soon. Uh, there's a new salon coming in there as well. And then uh, Three Disciples is moving their, their tasting room to the old two tread space. So that's very exciting. Very exciting move, um, but I'll keep everyone updated as I learn more. Um, we have a couple others that are in the works, but I don't quite have details on them, uh, but definitely want to make sure everyone knows um, kind of what's moving in and out downtown. Our 500 block business owners met uh, just a couple days ago to talk through the closure of their block. They're, they're the only block that has um, consistently voted to keep the, uh, keep the barricades in place. And those who were in attendance at the meeting, which was the majority of the business owners there uh, today, they, um, they, or yesterday, they decided they wanted to keep the closures in place for the time being, um, really in recognition of, of kind of the tough spot that our restaurants are in. Because even right now at 25% capacity, for some, for some of our restaurants, that means that uh, if they have 25% capacity, they're, they're able to socially distance tables, uh, but their capacity won't change at 50 or 75% because they need to keep that social distancing in place. So even if they could potentially increase capacity, they can't actually um, do so because of their space limitations. So it's just very challenging for them um, right now. So they're very appreciative that all the other businesses are understanding and willing to let them kind of maximize the outdoor space there. Um, especially since they're also reporting that 
most of their customers still want to eat outside. So uh, that'll likely change as more and more people get vaccinated, but for now, um, it's kind of what's helping them hold on. Um, we also know that we get consistently positive feedback from the community about having, having portions of the street closed. Uh, definitely some don't, don't like it, but uh, that atmosphere is something that a lot of them have uh, really appreciated, especially last summer. So we'll be looking to figure out how we can uh, replicate that work a little bit. Uh, and then just to kind of repeat what I've said in, in probably our, all the meetings I've attended here, but also to reiterate Chris's comments, just that the homeless issue remains the main issue on um, ongoing concerns with um, vandalism, comfort of patrons, um, and uh, issues issues with staff working downtown. So it, it's definitely a challenge, one that our Street Plus team and Catholic Charities work very hard on, um, but it, it doesn't appear to be getting any better. Uh, we are worried, like Chris said, with the warm weather, it does, the population tends to increase. And uh, if, if downtown isn't quite, <clears throat> excuse me, back to the way it usually is, um, there's a chance it could get even worse than it is now. <clears throat> so um, we're gonna continue to focus on that and uh, collaborate with our partners at downtown enforcement team. So thanks to them for always being responsive when needed uh, and Catholic charities as we try to get um, interested folks housed as well. Uh, our DAO committees are doing a lot right now to actively support all aspects of downtown. So we have an ad hoc group um, that's uh, working to try and support the possibility of the county center moving downtown as well as the EIFD. So they're right now trying to meet with um, ad hoc committee members for the county and the city to share those details and, and see how they can help support uh, both of those projects. Our community engagement committee uh, hosted a community-wide meeting last week to get feedback from business owners on what they'd like to see over the summer. So um, they're gonna take that feedback and uh, kind of put together a, a plan that then our business owners will be able to kind of, uh, see as we roll out. Uh, they also asked that we reach out to the public to get their feedback. So we did a brief survey that we pushed out online uh, to get a little more input from members of the public uh, as we kind of shape what summer plans will look like. Uh, this committee will also be fundraising to uh, try to put those summer plans in place. So they've got a lot that they're looking forward to and um, grateful to have a, a good group of business owners there uh, representing different sectors and different locations throughout downtown. Our business development ad hoc committee has also been meeting. Uh, they're working on figuring out new ways to support um, new businesses that are moving downtown, um, as well as recruiting new businesses to the area. So uh, thanks to Raisa for, for really jumping in and being a part of that committee. Um, but they're, they're just getting started and there's definitely some exciting collaboration on the way through that. Our design and improvement committee uh, has been talking through a variety of projects and we're hoping that we'll be able to get started on pruning and replacing trees along fourth. Um, we just got a great contribution from suburban propane to help make that possible. So um, we're talking through those options as well. Um, and again, hopefully working with Railroad Square if it makes sense to kind of put together an economy of scale proposal there. Um, our, and I did want to, you know, Raphael mentioned wayfinding. I actually spoke to Noel yesterday, Raphael. So uh, trying to get in the loop on, on all things wayfinding. So that, is, that is a priority of our, <clears throat> our downtown district as well. We're just a little further behind Railroad Square on that. Our parking committee is also meeting soon uh, next week on Monday um, so that they can review the feedback we've gotten from our business owners about uh, garage parking. Um, there's a lot of interest from them in trying to keep the first hour free and, and free weekends while downtown is still trying to kind of rebound from um, all, that, all that's been going on. Uh, but we understand that's, that's the challenge to the parking district and their budget has taken a huge hit. So um, trying to figure out a way we can kind of work together on that. And, and um, I know Kim will probably be reporting later, but uh, definitely staying in touch with her as we kind of work through those challenges. A um, couple updates on our non-event events. Um, as Chris said, the excellent adventure has been going really well. We've gotten great feedback about this. Uh, Bayside Church has really been an amazing par partner. Um, they're creative and, and dedicated and really investing um, in supporting downtown business and it's made a huge difference. It's, it's pretty 
pretty cool when you have a company or business that's been downtown for, you know, uh, over a hundred years. And they say they've never had so many new people come into their store. Um, you know, so doing radio ads and ads in the paper and promotions and sales hasn't brought people in, but something like this <clears throat> has brought in new, um, new potential customers. So, you know, it's been free to the businesses. Uh, Bayside has, has been the group that's really spent all the money to make this happen. Uh, and a lot of their time and effort as well. So it's just, it's a really great thing to see. They've been, again, amazing partners and it's been a huge benefit. Uh, we're still trying to work with the museum to creatively fill a couple of the empty spaces downtown. Um, thankfully, we're having to kind of shift a little bit as those empty spaces get um, kind of move into the lease process. It's, it's a good problem to have, but uh, hopefully we'll have, we'll see some historic photos up there relatively soon. Um, and then our, our poetry program is opening on Saturday, which we're really excited about. So this is the final installation of the Open and Out program, and it's an interactive poetry exhibit. So it's a month long. Uh, April is National Poetry Month, so starting today, uh, and it'll run through the end of the month. So I really want to encourage everyone to go down to Courthouse Square to participate. It's um, child, kid friendly, family friendly, really open to anyone and everyone. So definitely check that out. And again, that opens on Saturday. Um, and then a little bit in the future, but we're still trying to figure out the feasibility of having a seasonal ice rink on the square. Really not sure if that's possible, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to determine that soon. There's been a big push from uh, members of the DAO board to try and see that happen. So um, we're working through some of the challenges right now with PG&E and uh, an electrician and support from the city to try and at least uh, figure out what next steps could be if it's possible. Um, the, the last thing, to report on, which is just an update on the Asala Fountain, because I know I always get asked. Still don't have a firm date, but um, hopefully in the next couple of months. And um, as soon as I have one, I will definitely send that out. Uh, there is um, a meeting happening today, so might have more details um, in the next in the next week or two. So I think that's um, that's it for me. Unless anyone has any other questions. Council, do we have oh, questions question. for Candice? And sorry, really quick, it is it is Cadence. I'm sorry, Cadence. That's okay. Um, run, I got three hours of sleep last night. I was just night. about to say, I, we can blame that on sleep deprivation, <laughs> not, not a problem. Um, yeah, so uh, we have, um, I have a couple of questions for you. These, you, you mentioned that the uh, outdoor seating has been pretty successful. Um, are you in that you were looking to, um, you, you made some statement like, we should the council be expecting uh, information or requests coming from the DAO to do this in the future in non-COVID times? Um, I, I think we, we're still waiting for details from city staff around um, the permanent parklet program. I think that's in the works. That That is what we're imagining the future to be. Um, the, the ultimate goal that came forward on the 500 uh, block meeting is that ultimately they do want the street to reopen. Um, but they, they don't want that to happen until restaurants really have the capacity to operate a little more normally again. Um, so at this point, I, I don't think they're looking for uh, regular closures. That's not been the, the general response from business owners. Uh, I will say that you know most of the community members really do like it. So unless there's a, a big shift from the mentality of the business owners, I don't think that that's something they'll be uh, looking for post COVID. Okay, well, thanks for that. Um, any members of the public wishing to speak on this item? There are no raised hands at this time. Okay, great. All right, thanks, Cadence. Um, we'll move on to the public safety update with Tim Barrett, San Rosa Police Department. Good morning, Council. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are currently focused on the underpasses. We now have a timeline. We'll be posting next week and clearing the camps the following week. We have been addressing problems related to the underpasses, including several arrests over the last week and towing problem vehicles. We've been working with Catholic charities to help them enforce their good neighbor policies when appropriate. We've been communicating with residents and business owners and are aware of the camp's impacts on, and the frustration, uh, especially from the hotels. Uh, Streets Plus staff, uh, staff from parking and some business owners have helped us identify a couple specific uh, homeless people that are causing issues downtown. 
Uh, one of those individuals recently arrested and has not returned downtown. We have been working with hosts, um, but the individuals are resistant to housing. Uh, the Prince Royal Greenway has remained clear under 101, but there are still people camping near the fish and cannery. We are in contact with a representative from the cannery and will continue to coordinate cleanup and property with them. Uh, we are hopeful that the new private security in the Railroad Square District will help curb some of the vandalism that they're experiencing and we'll continue to coordinate with those businesses and the Railroad Square District. That's all we have right now. Okay, thanks. Any members of council have any questions? I, I do have a quick question, Chair Tibbs. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm curious about the vandalism. Um, I don't remember vandalism being that much of an issue in the past. At least it hasn't been highlighted. And now in, it's, it seems to be um, a little more prevalent. I'm curious if you can articulate for me the nature of the vandalism that's happening. Um, I, I can't, I, I wouldn't imagine that it's this graffiti. What, what, what's happening be, beyond, I did hear windows breaking, which of course is vandalism. Is there, are there other types of vandalism that seem prevalent right now? It's, it is the windows breaking uh, in the railroad square area. And it's also, it is spray painting. It's not specifically graffiti mm. it's just more spray painting uh, for the sake of spray painting things and so that's okay. currently what we're experiencing is primarily in the railroad square area okay thank you I, it was just a curiosity because I, I like like i said i had not heard that that was um much of an issue in fact breaking of glass also i don't remember being a an issue um of late i mean it may have been maybe was unreported uh, etc but i was um it is disturbing. I, I didn't realize that that was that that had become quite as as commonplace as it is today. I Thank think you. it's been going on unreported for quite some time. And as we develop more relationship with the businesses and the hotels uh, around Rose Square, we're getting more and more information or trying to be more proactive in, in addressing it. Yeah, good point. Thank you very much. Any questions, Victoria? Are you good? Okay, I have one question for you. Um, you know, you mentioned that a lot of the uh, homeless individuals that you're working with in downtown are, are resistant to host. Can you expand upon the reasons why? Uh, obviously, there's there's multiple reasons, there are multiple factors that make them resistant. Uh, one of the specific reasons um, is some people don't like the shelter options that we currently have available. And so they're wanting more kind of like the family camp that we used to have. They want that kind of tent type shelter. Mm -hmm. uh, not everyone loves Sam Jones Hall as, as an option. And then other issues, obviously, that impact our mental health issues and, and trying to get them in the pipeline for mental health is difficult. We can get them in there, but that's a very overburdened um, program. And so some of them fall through the cracks. And then some, a certain percentage of the transit population have been transient so long that they prefer the lifestyle. and They just continue to refuse services regardless of what those services look like or how many times we contact them. So all we can do is just continue to try to offer those services and hopefully between outreach and enforcement, get them into services eventually. Great, no, I, I appreciate you uh, you saying that because I think when we talk about trying to help the downtown, obviously the city's hands are tied greatly due to the uh, injunction from the Ninth Circuit. So, you know, sometimes we now have to probably have conversations about uh, what is the right type of shelter um, to help incentivize people to utilize it more, which has the, the tangential benefit to the downtown businesses of helping the, the issue overall. So um, uh, thank you, Sergeant Barrett and congratulations. I heard you were recently promoted. Um, so uh, really happy for you and look forward to working with you. I was, thank you very much. And congratulations on your new baby. Thank you, sir. Um, let's move on to item uh, 3.4, the maintenance of Courthouse Square update. We've got uh, Mr. Finnegan. Pardon, Chair Tibbetts. <clears throat> um, while we don't have any hands raised, I just wanted to acknowledge that the, that the public um, has had the opportunity to speak. Absolutely. Thank you for the help. Um, appreciate it. So we have no hands. We're good to move on? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, let's hear item 3.4. Well, good morning. Uh, my apologies. Tim Finnegan uh, had a prior meeting scheduled. So uh, my name is Jeremy Gundy. I'm direct, Deputy Director of Transportation and Public Works for the field services division and I'll be providing the update for our park maintenance team uh, in the downtown area. So the rehabilitation as uh, many of you may have already noticed 
um, of the turf in the courthouse square began about two weeks ago. Uh, so we fenced that area off and uh, did some weed removal and reseeding of the turf there. Um, there's still some touch up work that needs to be done to fill in some of the low spots. Um, and then we'll also be following up with some application of a organic fertilizer to address the remaining broadleaf uh, weeds throughout that area. Uh, we do anticipate the reopening of that area within the next two weeks uh, due to the, uh, the nice warm weather uh, that we've been having. Uh, it appears that uh, the project has been uh, pretty successful. Uh, so we are also currently working uh, on performing weed abatement uh, in the tree wells and the planters uh, throughout the courthouse square area and also along 4th Street. Uh, we've been focusing a lot of efforts, um, as many of you have seen and, and discussed, along the Prince Memorial Greenway. Uh, last month, our team um, removed approximately 80 cubic yards of debris along the pathways there, um, which included some of the home, uh, homeless encampment there. Uh, we also spent an additional 250 hours of labor uh, removing graffiti and, um, and just dirt and grime and other debris along the pathway. Um, and then our city's uh, electrical division has been working on making repairs to the to the lighting, pretty much all the lighting along the greenway. Um, the, a lot of damage has been caused due to the vandalism um, along that stretch. So um, they were able to get a lot of the lights back on and they're in the process of ordering uh, replacement bulbs uh, for a lot of those units. Uh, additional vandalism along the greenway um, uh, includes damage to a lot of the decorative rock facing um, along the pathways and the tile work, uh, some of the decorative tile work. Um, and then also we've experienced several fires in some of our storm drain outfall pipes that outfall into the creek there. Um, folks are uh, shoving Christmas trees and other debris up in those pipes and lighting them on fire, uh, creating uh, some extensive damage uh, to the plastic pipe um, throughout that area. Um, we're also researching uh, the use of a small sidewalk sweeper. Um, we don't currently uh, own a unit like this, but we've demoed um, a couple different units and feel that uh, they, you know, this compact type of a sweeper will allow us to perform regular maintenance and cleaning of just like the, the light grime uh, and other debris along the greenway and other pathways that the city maintains throughout the um, throughout our jurisdiction. So um, we're really happy with, with the demos that we've seen. It would be an additional uh, need that we'll we'll end up going to council to request, um, and we are working on trying to identify a funding source for that. Um, and then now with the warmer weather, um, we're also working on mowing the grass along the planter strips at the Deba Hill Park. And, and some of the areas throughout the Greenway. Uh, you see the capital improvement project uh, going on in Courthouse Square to install the, the bollards uh, at the north and south end of the square. And that, uh, from what I understand, that work is going well uh, with a completion date uh, mid to late April. So over the next two weeks, our team will also be scheduling work with the Streets Plus team to clean and paint uh, the garbage can. Um, and there's also some damage to the doors that will also need to be replaced. Uh, we also received a request to replace some of the damaged benches throughout the Corral Square. And we're currently researching the different types and cost and availability of some of those benches. Um, we're also evaluating and identifying a, a funding source for some additional tree work that's needed in the depot park on Railroad Square. And we're, we're also trying to evaluate the possibility of doing that work in house. Um, but given our current staffing levels and the workload, uh, that may be challenging. Um, however, I'm happy to announce that we are currently recruiting uh, for um, two parks uh, groundskeeper positions uh, and also a maintenance worker position. So that may help to move that work along. And uh, that concludes my update. I'm happy to answer any questions that either of you may have. Looks like council member Sawyer has one. Thank you. And um, thanks, Tim. I, I'm, I have a couple of questions. Um, one is the, what, the, what the status might be, if any, um, if there is a continuing conversation on CCTV installation on the Prince Memorial Greenway, uh, 
for security. I'm not sure if that's even something that that is affordable or that has been considered. I I really um, cringe a little bit at at the at the uh, the need for a, a use of, of that kind of, of um, observation, but um, it's still. I have a feeling that it would that the installation of that kind of equipment might um, pale in comparison to the amount of money we spend in repairing the the elements that are being des destroyed or damaged by um, whomever, uh, whether it be homeless or other uh, other individuals that feel that they are. Um, hidden and give them the opportunity to do damage. The other question I have has to do with the lawn area in, in Courthouse Square. Um, and uh, again, I kind of shy away from the concept of synthetic turf, but synthetic turf has come a long way. And I wonder if there is a, an, an environmentally um, sensitive and texturally sensitive um, replacement to the lawn, which every time there is a major event needs to be fenced off and repaired. Um, if not, I'm not even sure of what I'm not sure to what degree um, or how much cost there is in that in, in the in the reparation, but it seems to be a, a, a constant issue with that we have created by putting um, natural turf in that uh, in, in, in that footprint of the old courthouse. So I'm curious if there's if there has been or will be conversation about synthetic turf in that area. Oh, thank you for that question. Uh, so yeah, I'll go ahead and start with the, the turf. Uh, so the current system that was installed um, during the reunification of the square uh, has a grid type pattern of uh, drainage feature underneath that turf. Um, it has not been very successful as you mentioned um, and does require a lot of maintenance um, you know, after large events. Uh, there are ongoing discussions of a future um, uh, complete rehabilitation project throughout the square there uh, involving that turf. And we are looking at other methods um, as far as uh, subsurface drainage and um, types of material that can be used in addition to um, artificial uh, turf that's available out there. So yes, those, those, to answer your question, those discussions continue to happen. Uh, we just are not at the point of identifying um, a final solution for that. Um, but we are aware of it and trying to, to make some changes. Okay, I, I appreciate that. I mean, it's a, it, it, given the amount of time and energy that is spent on it, it's such a it's a relatively small part of the entire um, site. So it, it concerns me that it is that it is sucking some of the um, rev some of the resources that could be used in other parts of the of the park or the the uh, the square, um, the plaza. Um, and so that's the way I bring it up. I, I, it concerns me that it's ongoing, and it sounds like you guys are are tackling those areas that 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 need that kind of attention and analysis. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. And then as far as the uh, the camera installation of CCTV uh, throughout the Prince Mobile Greenway, from a maintenance standpoint, I do know that discussions are happening with IT and the police department and other um, and other departments to see. Uh, what can be uh, installed out there if it's feasible, if it's, uh, if it's something that's, um, you know, within, within uh, our means as far as the budget. Uh, but I do know those discussions continue. Um, obviously, it can be somewhat challenging, uh, like you mentioned, to, to install cameras that folks know are there. Um, a lot of vandalism uh, concerns as far as them, uh, you, know, uh, you know, painting over the lenses and, and where to install those. So I know we have done a couple um, field visits out there and walk the area to see if there were uh, any locations that could be identified to install those, um, those types of units. So I do know that those discussions continue um, with various departments throughout the city, but I, I'm not sure that a conclusion has been made yet. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from council? Okay, seeing none. Um, Jeremy, I did just wanna say thank you uh, to your team that is part of the debris cleanup team. I know that that's probably a, a difficult job, but I, I noticed that it's already really helping beautify the city. And um, so my, my gratitude to the, all of them. Um, now, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on this item? We do, we have Mr. Paul Schwartz. Um, 
And Mr. Schwartz, if you would um, confirm that you are able to, we can hear your audio and that you are able to see the timer. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I had just had a couple of questions and comments. One is, uh, John, you took my you, you uh, took my wind sails away when you talked about the turf versus the grass or you know synthetic versus regular turf. I, I kind of wondered about that for years as as the periodic you know repair jobs are required, and maybe we should look at having uh, having the um, <laughs> the folks that provided the underground irrigation systems you know pay for the cost of replacing all of that with with something synthetic since apparently it's not working too well but I, i'm somewhat being somewhat facetious but but maybe not i don't know um uh, cadence mentioned something about the pg e in the downtown area I, I didn't understand what she was referring to can somebody just quickly answer that question what was she talking about in terms of negotiating or working with pg e do you recall uh what that was in regards to if not that's fine i'll, I'll call her um, and then, and then a couple of people, I, I, you know, I work downtown and, uh, lots of friends work downtown and so on. And I frequently hear the comment, why don't we have some trees in the center of the, you know, square grass area for shade? And I don't know if that's something that's under consideration as you look at the, at the, at the grass and the replacement of the grass or how we're going to maintain the grass more effectively. But it, there's, you know, obviously a big open area with, with no shade and needless to say, there are trees around the perimeter, but it may be years before those trees provide shade in the in the center of the square. So I just thought I'd throw that out because it's on a bright sunny day, it's 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 you know, it's nice to have a little shade there if, if we could somehow figure out a way to do that. Um, and then I don't know if this is the appropriate place to ask this question, but in the economic development uh, subcommittee um, discussions, there have been discussions about, or there was an item in, uh, regarding the economic resiliency activities, and there was a, a list of projects, and one of them was the RFP slash Q for downtown city properties. I have not been able to find that anywhere. I guess I could call Raisa, but does anyone know if that list of sites or properties is somewhere available? Uh, and maybe I just need to get with staff on that. I'm sorry, maybe the inappropriate place to ask that question, but it seems like it's a pretty important item in relative to, you know, how these sites that the city may be disposing of uh, are, you know, are pursued by private parties. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. Uh, Any other public comments? Um, just one moment. Uh, Chair Tibbetts, uh, if I may, I, we can have Cadence address the uh, question, the inquiry regarding PG&E. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rafael. I was actually going to wait until all public comment was finished, and I'll just make a comment for Mr. Schwartz. But Mr. Schwartz, the Brown Act precludes us from engaging in a back and forth conversation, question and answering with you. Um, but if council members do choose to ask your, your question when, when it comes up, we can do that and we will. But let's get through public comment uh, first, if that's all right. Chair Tibbetts, there are no additional hands raised at this time. Okay, great. And then um, as Raphael indicated, if Cadence is still with us, uh, if she had any helpful information that addresses Mr. Schwartz's question, that would be great. Sure. Uh, that that comment was in relation to looking into the feasibility of having a seasonal ice rink out on Courthouse Square. So it's not um, specific to um, run a, a chiller that would keep an ice rink cold. So that's that's what that was in relation to. And happy to answer more so questions about that. At another time. You cut out briefly, but, but I'm guessing the gist is to run a chiller, you require a lot of electricity and you need to have a higher amperage or electrical flow. So you're going to be upgrading some infrastructure. Is that safe to say? Yeah, we're, we're looking into the feasibility and the cost of upgrading that infrastructure to in order to be able to have three phase power um, in the square. Awesome. Thanks, Cadence. Um, and then uh, Raphael, I don't know if you have any information or anybody on staff 
does about the RFP slash Q on disposition of city assets? I do not, but I can definitely uh, have a discussion with Raiz and then we can follow up with Paul. Okay, thanks so much. Um, All righty, so I think we've, we've done public comment. Um, I'm not seeing any further questions or comments from council. Uh, let's move on to item 3.5, permitted events and public art. And we have Tara Thompson. Hi, thank you. Good morning, Chair Tibbetts and council members. Um, I have a brief update on events as well as public art. I'll start with events. Um, as you know, um, we still are operating in a, a state of very high restrictions on gatherings, especially public large gatherings. And so all of our special event permits and many of our other permit types are still suspended until the county or state lifts those restrictions on such events or provides public uh, guidance on public gatherings. Right now, the guidance is limited to private gatherings and the state's newest guidance, which was effective starting today, does address live performances and events with fixed seating. Um, The guidance allows outdoor seated live events and performances such as in ballparks or stadiums um, and events with uh, fixed seating and that can have significantly reduced capacity with reserved tickets only. Um, This guidance does not apply to most of the types of events that we permit here in Santa Rosa through a special event permit given the nature of our public spaces such as Courthouse Square. So for general admission venues and events where uh, the central activity allows patrons to move around a shared space, unfortunately, the guidance does not apply here. So um, for special event permits, we are starting to inform event organizers to uh, the fact that and to ensure proper review and planning, um, the state and or local restrictions and guidelines allowing the proposed event would need to be in place at least 90 days prior to the proposed event so that um, city staff and other agencies have the time to review um, those proposals, those plans, um, and that we would have time to process the application. That's for a large event such as a marathon. Um, we we have a kind of a flexibility with the smaller events for the somewhere between 30 and 60 days to process, but um, we are really trying to get the message out as, you know, our, our, our spot in the tier system is looking better and the spring weather is beautiful. We're getting more inquiries for event, uh, event organizers wanting to know how and when they can bring their events back. And so the message we're crafting now to make sure everyone is aware is that kind of expectation that we, we would need to know that we can permit the event given the state restrictions and state and county guidelines and restrictions, um, and then have enough time to, to safely process review plans and approve a permit. So, um, so that, that's the update for events. Um, and I, I'll just move on to arts uh, and then answer questions if that's okay. Um, so for the art program, we have um, a brief update on Imagine Art in Courthouse Square. The selected design by Blessing Hancock includes text, um, if you recall from her design. And that text will be collected through an engagement process, which is going to be starting later this month. So we're starting to work with her on an outreach campaign, um, connections with local organizations, schools, um, neighborhood groups, community groups, business organizations, so that we are doing an appropriate type of outreach um, given you know, our COVID situation, but having uh, various methods for people to interact with um, kind of answering some prompts to collect some words that will then end up on the final piece. For our conservation and maintenance, we have ongoing projects. Most recently, just this week, the Guardian of the Creek, um, also known as the Fish Sculpture in Prince Gateway Park was cleaned up. Um, and uh, recently they've also, our our conservators have worked on Hangover 2 in Juilliard Park, the large steel piece on Santa Rosa Avenue, um, as well as some other pieces at City Hall. The National Arts Program um, I mentioned at our meeting last month is online this year and it will be online. Um, the, The online exhibit will still be available through the end of April at our insideoutthere.com website. And a new program, which was launched last month, Musician Relief Grants, um, has an application deadline of April 11th. So 
so there's still time. Uh, the purpose of the program is to support working performing musicians in the Santa Rosa arts community by providing a grant that will aid the musician to continue working through this time of economic hardship. The funding is aimed towards musicians who have lost income uh, due, uh, due to the inability to perform live. The funding comes from the Live at Juilliard concert series, which was not able to occur last year and most likely this year as well. Um, and finally, uh, for the Fifth Street parking garage, the call for artists was closed just this Monday. Um, the selection process is expected to be completed over the summer with some engagement opportunities in June for the community. Um, and then the final artwork on that garage will most likely be installed early next year, February. Um, so with that, I will answer any questions. Thanks, Tara. Any questions from Council? None from me. Okay, uh, seeing none, we'll move on to public comment for item 3.5. There are no public comments at this time. Okay, um, thanks Tara. I look forward to seeing that art piece on the 5th Street garage. Let's move on to item 3.6, the parking program. We have an update with Kim Nadeau. Good morning, council members. Um, I'll try to keep this quick. Uh, first thing I wanted to talk about was the garage repair project, which is ongoing. Uh, it's on on uh, pace to be completed as expected um, at the end of the summer. And there have been um, minimal impacts to parkers. So that is uh, going smoothly. We've completed installing multi-space meters and all new multi-space meters and all of the surface lots that now use pay by plate technology. So you don't have to go back to the, your car with a, with a receipt. You can um, enter your license plate at the machine and you're done. So that's gone smoothly. And then lastly, I wanted to talk about the uh, garage fee waivers that uh, Cadence had brought up and that we've I've been in contact with her about. So the fee waivers that the council approved in the garages include the first hour free in all the garages, weekends are free, and um, evenings are free in the garages currently. And that is set to expire when the county reaches the yellow tier or June 30th of of this year, whichever comes first. And it's starting to look like the yellow tier is going to arrive perhaps sooner than we had anticipated as things are looking um, promising on the COVID front. So I am um, preparing to bring a, an item to council as, as soon as possible to um, recommend that the council extend the fee waivers through June 30th, regardless of when we hit the yellow tier. Um, in the event that the yellow tier comes sooner. And then we are exploring the possibility of using American CARES Plan Act funds to make the parking district whole for continuing these um, fee waivers beyond uh, June 30th of this year, which is um, of interest to the merchants. So that would be um, a council decision to decide if it, it, well, first it has to be determined if the parking fund is an eligible use of the American CARES uh, plan funds, which um, at least a preliminary review suggests that it may be. And then if, if, that, if the backfilling of parking, lost parking revenue qualifies, then it would go to council to um, approve the use of the funds for that purpose. So that, that is something that you can expect to see coming. Um, we're looking at a deficit in this fiscal year of about 1.3 million to the parking fund. And if we were to continue these waivers through the next fiscal year, I estimate a revenue loss of somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 to $750,000. It really depends on how strong the recovery is, how much the, the revenue reduction would be. But we are certainly seeing an increase in parking activity now between the, the beautiful weather, the uh, moving to the orange tier, or red, red tier, I guess we're in the red tier, um, we're definitely seeing an uptick in parking activity, which is promising. I mean, it's good to see that people are, are anxious to get back out. So um, that's what I have for you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Kim. Any questions from members of the council? Um, Kim, I did have a question, and if you don't know it offhand, I don't expect you to no worries um, and that is does does the parking department have any reserves uh, to help cover that deficit 
Yes, we do. Um, we're expecting our reserves to be 7 million at the end of this fiscal year. And, um, you know, next year, depending, we may break even or, or we may have to draw down on reserves again. It really, well, of course, it depends on if we extend these fee waivers, if there is a replacement funding source for the fee waivers. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have reserves to cover us for now. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, any members of the public wishing to speak on item 3.6? Yes, we do have a Mr. Jeff Blackman. Mr. Blackman, I am unmuting you. And if you could verify that we're able to hear you and that you are able to see the timer, please. Thank you. Yes, I can see. Thank you. Um, this is Jeff Blackman with Bedford Lodging. I'm the owner of the AC Hotel by Marriott in the Railroad Square. I apologize. I <clears throat> got caught on another call and didn't, didn't dial in in time for the section 3.1 but it's tangentially related to parking under the 101 where there's currently um, uh, a homeless encampment. So I just wanted to use this short period of time to, to voice my concerns um, for that activity, for the re reduction in parking uh, under the 101 and for the safety of my guests. Uh, it's been an extremely difficult year in the hospitality business uh, and we've made a very large investment in downtown Santa Rosa and business is starting to come back. In fact, we ran 86% occupancy last Saturday night, uh, but 50% of those guests uh, either called me directly to complain or filed a complaint with Marriott Corporate that they didn't feel safe in and around the hotel. <clears throat> I have not gotten in my 25 year career calls directly from Marriott, of which we're a franchise organization and rely on Marriott for, for the livelihood of our business. I have not gotten a direct call from Marriott citing safety concerns for guests. So I just wanted to bring this to the council's attention um, and know that there are other dialogues going on, both within you know, Chris Wilson and the, and the Railroad Square Association uh, and, and city staff. Uh, but I can't emphasize enough how much of a challenge it is uh, to make an investment in the city and actually have people start to come to visit <clears throat> this wonderful city uh, and they are not coming back uh, if the conditions can uh, continue to be uh, as dangerous uh, as they are. And, and, and aside from that, you know, we've got, we've got parking challenges under the 101 as a result. So, I'll yield my time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blackman. There are no additional hands raised at this time. Okay, thanks. Any final comments from council? Seeing none, I think at this point we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.